Hello and welcome. Now today we have to deal yet again with another video from Blue Orange 22 who is supposedly a man's rights activist like myself but unfortunately he's one of these types who wants to appease feminists he wants to be buddy buddy with feminists essentially and he's also someone who seems to set himself up as some kind of leader of the man's rights movement or something or it appears at least that he tries to speak for the whole of the man's rights movement which is unwarranted and you don't speak for the whole of the man's rights movement blue orange and yeah in, in this video we can just witness another um case of him essentially trying to water down the man's rights message right and basically him showing his stupidity on display unfortunately because he tries to ask the question why is the man's rights movement hated so much right we will see what his answer to that question is right but yeah i think this is actually really important that i respond to this video and that i respond to him in general because he is someone who wants to paint the man's rights movement in a way that is um that has compromise or that has a middle ground with feminism and that is not acceptable that is where we draw the line actually and that is where we have to push back so yeah let's get into his video so why is the men's rights movement so hated why do so many people hate men's rights activists or even fear men's rights activists i've been in the mra for no that's the first mistake right off the bat people don't fear the men's rights movement and be, be, because the men's rights movement is not effective as it is now now if it actually were effective then they would fear the men's rights movement because we would push towards a dismantling of the misandric conditions and structures in our society right we would ban feminism right we would put them out of positions of power and influence actually because they are a criminal hate movement and they shouldn't be in any position of power in our society unfortunately they are so this is why they would potentially fear the men's rights movement but as it is now they laugh at it because it is ineffective and hijacked by trad cons and people like you unfortunately blue orange the, if the vast majority of the men's rights movement were like the pro-male collective then this would be another topic right a long time for over a decade since high school and i've gotten so many very negative and very hostile and even fearful reactions to that i've had times when i've known people for a while co-workers or friends but as soon as they find out that i'm a men's rights activist it really confuses them because they'd say well you seem like a reasonable person and i don't understand why you would be a men's rights activist and then when i explain to them what my belief systems are and why i'm an mra and what that means to me and what we believe they're surprised because their expectations were very different because they have this image of mras as being misogynistic and hateful and hating women etc now um first of all they're just being lied about right by feminists but they wouldn't actually believe the lies of the feminists if they weren't biased in some way but we'll get to that later and it's bothered me 
for all these years of being an MRA, why do we have such a negative reputation when, in my opinion, the things that MRAs believe in is just basic equality? We want fairness for all. We're not misogynistic. We don't hate anybody. We just want to address issues that affect. Stop with the begging. Stop with, oh, we are not misogynistic. And we, like, try not to back. Don't back. Okay, because they will see us as misogynistic regardless of what we say, right? Whether or not we say, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we say and it doesn't matter what we do. They will see the very existence of a movement that advocates for men's rights and advocate. Um, advocacy for men to be treated like human beings actually they will see such a movement always with disdain and call us whatever slurs necessary to keep us marginalized and on the fringes of society right and keep us from achieving power so there's no need for this begging actually even though what you are technically saying is true, of course, right? We want equal rights between men and women. But what this actually entails, and this is a point that I will bring up more than once, what this actually entails is reducing or abolishing even priv privileges that women have unfair privileges that women have is what needs to be abolished this is what equality actually entails right so but this is the part that nobody really likes right this is the part where even when people virtue signal that they supposedly care about men's issues when you bring up that you actually need to hold women accountable and um yeah do do something that makes them give up their privileges in society that is something people are not comfortable with right men and boys we want to address men's issues that are pervasive in society and we get such a negative such a hostile reaction to that and i often wonder why that is I can't tell you why that is. It is because they don't want men to have any rights. It's that simple. They think the very idea of men having rights is so disgusting and so... They're so appalled by it. By the very idea of men having human rights. Because they don't see men as human. They don't see men and boys as as human I think that's actually very obvious when you see how men and boys are treated in our society that is I mean it, it is so obvious actually that it is baffling that, that that nobody really sees it that way right and it's very confusing and sometimes there's you know this feeling of kind of isolation where you feel like you're doing the right thing and yet you're just surrounded by people who are against that. And it feels like it's very almost disconcerting to think that you're believing in the right thing and yet you're getting so much hate for it. You're getting hate for it because people hate men. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's not confusing at all, actually. And, I mean, Blue Orange is longer an MRA than I am. So he should actually know what's up by now. He should actually have vastly more knowledge and understanding than I have on this topic. And yet it seems that I understand better than him because people hate men. And all the evidence points to it. All the evidence points to it. And they don't even see men as 
human beings. I mean, think about that for a second, right? That we live in a world in which baby boys are being mutilated and there's not even a peep from the general public. This is the world we live in and this is legal in pretty much every country. Think about that for a second. What, what does this say about the human species? This speaks volume, volumes about the human species. And so I step back sometimes and I wonder why is the men's rights movement so hated? Why do MRAs get so much negativity? And I think the number one reason is misunderstanding. That's complete nonsense, of course. That's, that is so demonstrably false. It's actually laughable. Because misunderstanding implies that people are not really... Um, I mean, they're, they're, of course, ignorant about the men's rights movement, right? But misunderstanding alone cannot explain that because it is actually willful misunderstanding because if they were if it was another group like um, another human rights group another human rights movement they would actually look into it with an open mind they would hear both sides right to clear up misunderstandings but they don't do that there needs to be another reason. They're already biased on the outset. I think people misunderstand the men's rights movement and misunderstand what we believe. I think people don't actually disagree with what MRAs believe. Like our core values, I think most people would agree with. I just agree that most people would agree with the core values of the men's rights movement because the core values of our movement implies that women would give up their privileges that would be something that people don't want you you don't think you don't think honestly that people would be okay with abolishing the male only draft or even um, drafting also women to make it more equal because there would be a lot of pushback against that i'm 100 percent certain about that and we have seen pushback actually especially from conservatives on that question even abolishing the draft in general has seen pushback like the mere suggestion of that. So the people don't agree with the man's rights core values because it would entail that women and society as a whole in general would give up certain privileges and certain goodies that they would gain from that they that they do gain from exploiting men. Right? People want to exploit men. Women want to exploit men. And this, if, if we would be li living in an equal society where the men's rights movement had success, this would mean they would give up these exploit exploitative um, relationships. Right? This child support slavery, for example for example and they are just sadistically addicted to harming men and this is something this is something society actually developed so they love to make fun of men but i mean for example there are these jokes about men getting hurt in various movies right and in, in various media so it shows that people have a sadistic side to them when it comes to men, right? Men are the punching bag. 
And this is exactly why vast majority of people don't share our core values when it comes to man's rights. It's that simple. Because our core values are equality and justice. And it's really as simple as that. We don't support sexism. We don't support discrimination. We don't support misogyny. We're not white Misogyny doesn't even exist, or at least there's no evidence that it exists. But we'll get to that later, by the way. And the thing about white supremacy or white supremacism is actually a projection from the feminist movement. The feminist movement is projecting their own sexism and white supremacy and fascism onto the man's rights movement because they themselves actually have these roots when you look into the feminist movement and the feminist history actually. I've covered this several times on my channel. But a lot of people have those associations towards the men's rights movement. And so when they hear the label MRA, they have an instant negative reaction. I think if we could educate people and talk to people about what men's rights activists actually believe and what we actually stand for, I think people would realize that the image that they have about the men's rights movement just isn't accurate. Now, the question that I have to be honest with is why do people have such a negative perception of the men's rights movement? If because they hate men. Now, also these associations, they are cultivated by the feminist movement that lie about MRAs. For example, after Elliot, Elliot Roger committed his massacre, immediately after that, the feminist media tried to associate Elliot Roger with the man's rights movement, even though there was um, no link between him and the man's rights movement. He was more into pickup artists, communities and incel forums, but they still tried to lie about um, the situation, supposedly that he had man's rights connections, even though he never cared about man's rights. This is how they tried to smear the man's rights movement, to associate the man's rights movement with uh, murderers. So this um, shows you that the feminist, the, the, the feminist movement will lie and create these associations, these fake associations between the man's rights movement and um, other things that are um, negative. So, but you, you have to understand people want to believe in these associations, right? It's not just they're mindlessly believing them for no reason, because there is actually, um, when people want to believe something different, they actually become more critical in their thinking. They become more skeptical if they're already biased towards a certain um, belief system, right? But when it comes to the man's rights movement, they readily accept the feminist lies about the men's rights movement without question, without question. And that shows you that there is already a bias at, at the outset, already at the starting point, because again, they hate men. They are biased against men. It is that simple. What we say is good. If what we do is good. If... Well, it's good for men, but it is not good for the female supremacist society in which we live in. Abolishing things like child support, abolishing things like the male-only draft, abolishing things like male circumcision, um, giving equal funds to homeless men and uh, homeless women, right? Building homeless, uh, uh, building homeless and shelters um, for men, 
building domestic viol violence shelters for men. These things would interfere with the with the victimhood narrative that feminists have created for women, right? And if there is no more special victimhood status for women and girls, then they wouldn't get um, more resources and more privileges, right? They wouldn't get all these goodies. And that's why people are against the men's rights movement because they actually don't believe in equality. When they say equality, they believe, they, they actually mean um, female supremacy or female privilege. This is what uh, is meant when you hear the word equality. This is why there exist things like, um, um, I don't know, commission for women and equality or something or equality and women council or what whatever the, the case may be right but they always put a special place for the woman they say especially women right in every like policy paper that you read on these topics because they want women and girls to have more resources and more privileges and more powers and than, than men and boys. It's that simple. So they don't believe in the same things that men's rights activists believe. The way we treat people is equally, if we're the good guys and we're saying the right thing and we're doing the right thing and we're just trying to achieve equality and justice for everybody, then why is everybody so against us? What's interesting is that I've noticed that people aren't actually against MRA beliefs. Like, they're not actually against the things we believe in. Yes, they are. They are, though. It's I, I said it already. Nobody, or almost nobody in our society, would be for an equal society, an equal rights between uh, men and women, if it would entail that women would give up privileges, right? I even had a uh, comment exchange under one of my videos yesterday um, where someone was talking about women's quotas and I countered with um, that I could actually make the argument for men quotas or yeah, for, for men quotas, because there's actually evidence that men are more discriminated against in the job market, right? But people wouldn't accept that. They wouldn't, they, they would push back against that. They would demonstrate against that. I mean, there, there are even uh, um, women's rights groups, so-called women's rights groups are... Um, are against um, gender neutral rape laws right for example in india i think it was and i think also in israel so this notion that they care about equal rights it's nonsense we're not actually against our ideas when i talk to people and i explain some of the ideas and positions of the men's rights movement they agree. But as soon as I use the label men's rights activist, as soon as I use the label MRA, I get a very negative reaction some of the time. Other times, I have to say, people are beginning to slowly warm up to the idea of the men's rights movement. But there's still many, many people who, as soon as they hear men's rights activist or MRA, they immediately have these associations in their head, a red pill, misogynistic, incel, and I realize that it's not the ideas of the men's rights movement that are getting rejected. It's the label of the men's rights movement that's getting rejected. They that's complete nonsense. Um, that, I'm sorry, that's just complete nonsense. I mean, okay, there might be some people um, who are warming up to the ideas of the men's rights movement, maybe, right? There is increasing in awareness to some extent, right? 
we, we don't want to be all doom and gloom here. But we also have to be realistic. Because some people are just virtue signalers and they say stuff to socialize and to appear more virtuous than they actually are. When you push these people hard enough, they will be anti-male to some extent or believe in some anti-male ideas, right? And they, when you say, for example, that men are the main victims of homicide, they're gonna counter with that, yeah, but they're also the main perpetrators, blah, 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 that sort of thing. Or when you say that it's unfair that women get majority of the custody of their, uh, of their children, because the divorce courts are rigged, then they would say, yeah, but this, if you have equal or shared parenting, then it would lead to abusive fathers having access to their children or some bullshit like that. If you push people hard enough, if you actually get to the specifics, they will be anti-male at some point. Even people who virtue signal. Now, again, I'm not saying that there aren't people out there who are starting to notice uh, men's issues and injustices that men's, men and boys face. But I think this is, um, we have to be careful that, that we don't just believe when someone just virtue signal, signals that, but they have to actually put money where their mouth is basically have an association with the men's rights movements as an organization rather than a philosophy. And I think a lot of this is because people label things and they associate things based on what they think a person is based on how they choose to identify themselves rather than listening to what someone actually says or how they... I mean, also what do you, what do you say about the label, right? That, I mean, labels are important, but at some point when it comes to the man's rights movement, we could name the man's rights movement the the happy longevity movement of infinite prosperity and and peaceful abundance or some shit like that, right? We could have the most positive sounding name ever and it would still um, be um, shunned by people because it's about advocating for men and boys. And as I've said time and time again, men and boys are seen as not even as second class citizens anymore, but not even as citizens anymore. Actually feel. I don't want to get into politics, but I think this is also going on with Republicans and Democrats in the United States. If you hear someone is a Democrat or Republican, a lot of people immediately make absolute assumptions about that person. And I think that's just very, very unhealthy. So the question is, if people agree with the ideas that MRAs talk about, then again, they don't. Why are they so against the label of the men's rights movement? Why? It doesn't matter. We again, we could name our movement the Sunshine and Rainbows movement of infinite health and uh, longevity. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we name the men's rights movement. As soon as people hear the policies, we would have people rioting in the streets. Um, saying that this is a sexist movement that is misogynistic and it is against women or some shit like that. It is that simple. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I have been called an incel um, in a Marxist Discord server because I brought up the issue of circumcision. I have been called an incel because... I don't want baby boys to be mutilated. Let that sink in for a second. Seriously. This just speaks volumes what people think 
about menopause. Seriously. Because the men's rights movement have such a bad name attached to it. And so I'm in a position where I really have to be honest. And if I'm honest to the question, why do I think the men's rights movement has such a bad reputation? I think most of it is because we're very unfairly attacked and slandered and smeared by people who I'll call anti-MRAs. And this is unfortunately where I have to bring feminism and feminists into the conversation, which I never liked doing because a lot of people say that, oh, the men's rights movement is just a reactionary movement to feminism and you don't actually care about men's rights. You just want to be against feminism and it's just a dog whistle for misogyny. Again, the, the feminists are projecting their own bigotry onto the men's rights movement. And again, look at the history of feminism and it becomes very apparent who are the actual um, bigots here. And the reality is we're attacked by feminists constantly. And something I want to make clear is that if you're watching this right now and you're a feminist and you say, I don't hate men, I want to dismantle the patriarchy, I want to help men, I'm not blaming people like you. So you believe in the patriarchy now, Blue Orange, because you just validated the concept. Really? Really? I mean, this is atrocious. If a feminist says she wants to help men by dismantling the patriarchy, then she's full of shit. Because the patriarchy is a conspiracy theory invented to um, attack men and to blame men for everything, even for their own oppression, and to not hold women accountable for, for anything. That is what the, the patriarchy theory is. It is like the cultural Marxist conspiracy theory, right? It is, it is a, a concept or a construct that has no valid, validity to it and it's just designed to attack men. It is that simple to vilify them, right? To create a boogeyman. And so if a feminist says she wants to help men by dismantling the patriarchy, what she actually says is, I want to um, demonize and vilify men and victim blame them. It is that simple. The feminists that I'm blaming are some of these political lobby groups or some of these big name feminists on social media who, who get tolerated and backed by all feminists. So you're talking about all feminists. There's no distinction here. There's no good feminists and bad feminists. They're all bad. This f feminism is a criminal hate movement steeped in misandry and has even fascist roots. Again, look into the history. I don't actually think are speaking in good faith, and I don't actually think are pursuing equality. And the reason why I say this is not because I've read some right-wing blog on feminism and now it's poisoned me against feminism. It's because for over a decade of talking about men's issues, I have had constant attacks, debates, and arguments with people who call themselves feminists who say things that are blatantly sexist and blatantly untrue. And you still want to cozy up to them. You still want to be on good terms with them and say, oh, I don't meet all the feminists, blah, blah, blah. Really? And we've seen feminist organizations lobby for laws that discriminate against men. You can search my channel. If you go in my channel, search feminism, and you'll see I have dozens of videos where I criticize feminists the things that they say and do. But I don't just blurt out things, oh, I don't like feminists for X, Y, and Z. Whenever I make a video criticizing feminists, I always give links. 
I give specific examples. I give you the name of the specific individual or the specific organization, and I put links in the description below, direct links showing the example that I'm talking about. It's not something that we just make up for no reason. And I'll finish by saying this. Is the men's rights movement perfect? Of course not. There's millions of people who call themselves MRAs. So of course you'll find examples of someone calling themselves an MRA saying something that is misogynistic. Show one example, because you haven't actually established that misogyny even exists, so we can dismiss that outright, actually. But there, there's actually a point here that he said that there are millions of people calling themselves MRAs, and they're not really MRAs. That is true, actually, because the men's rights movement has been hijacked, and corrupted by um, right-wing forces and by feminist forces and by all kinds of um, communities, conspiracy nutters and all of that, that push anti-male ideas and derail from actually effectively strategizing and mobilizing the men's rights movement towards effective advocacy and effective um, grassroots work, actually. But, yeah, th this is not what he wants to talk about. Instead, he wants to say that there are certain... MRAs or people who call themselves MRAs who are supposedly misogynistic even though he has not even provided evidence that misogyny itself even exists because again there is no evidence that it exists humans are actually quite fond of um, of uh, women and girls very fond actually and we don't deny that misogyny exists. There are many, many valid cases and points that feminists bring up that are completely true. No. That's complete horseshit. Misogyny, again, there is no evidence that it exists. None. None whatsoever. And there are no valid cases that feminists bring up. None whatsoever. Show me one study. Show me one study that proves the existence of misogyny in human beings. That there is literal hatred and antipathy of, um, of women out there. It doesn't exist. I have not seen one study that proves that. And there's evidence to count counter, actually. Let me show you something. For example, this study here, the development of implicit gender attitudes. And this is one example, and I have in other videos shown dozens of studies that show that there's a strong pro-female bias in human beings and a strong anti-male bias um, in human beings and the positive implicit gender attitudes um, towards females start uh, very early even at the age of five even right you can read this yourself right but both male and female participants tending to evaluate female more positively than male. There is no evidence that misogyny exists anywhere. And you might be saying, oh, but here's one comment from some obscure forum that said something negative about women. So does this prove that the 
comment was made out of hatred towards women. Can you actually prove that? Or was it some other factor? No, you can't. Now you might be saying, but you say that misandry exists. Yes, but the difference is that misandry actually has been shown to exist. Um, because we have actually experimental data showing that human beings hold implicit anti-male biases. And we can also see that misandry exists because our society actually has policies in place that actively discriminate against men and boys. So no, feminists have zero valid points. And we don't deny that. We're against sexism and misogyny of any kind. And sexism against women is definitely a real thing. N name, name me one example of it. Name me one example and one piece of evidence of it. You can't. You, ha you have not provided any evidence of that anywhere. Another thing I just want to close out on is the associations that sometimes you'll see with the men's rights movement and the red pill movement, the MAGTA movement, the incel movement, we are not the same thing. The men's rights movement is not the same thing as the red pill, MAGTA or incel movements. That is true, but these associations are created deliberately by feminists who try to smear the men's rights movement. And, but here's the thing, people, if they weren't biased against men and boys already at the outset, they wouldn't believe in these lies. They wouldn't believe in this slander. They readily and happily believe in these things because they already hate men and boys. You know how vast majority of society and especially women um, see men do you want to know how they actually see men? Um, they don't see men as human beings, but they want men to work, to pay, to provide resources, to protect the women, to be used as cannon fodder, and to die eventually. That is how vast majority of society sees men. Men should work, pay, be cannon fodder, and eventually die. And that's it. That is how the vast majority of our society um, views men. How do I know that? Because this is how they treat men. This is how men are treated in our society. Um, and our society actually runs on that being the case. Men are the exploited class in our society. So you're wrong when you say that most people or many people agree with the core values of the men's rights movement. They don't. They are very hostile to it, actually, to the very idea, even to the very idea of it. Some people might virtue signal and get all, um, you know, get, get all um, emotional when they hear about uh, male homelessness or male suicide rates. But then they turn around and um, tolerate or push for policies or push for ideas that actively lead to male homelessness or male suicide so they don't want to get to the core issues they just want to um, pretend that they care about some of the symptoms of this anti-male society y you won't see the vast majority of our society being against something like child support being against something like the male only draft being against something like uh, admitting that 
men är the vast majority of the victims of um, intimate partner violence and violence in general. And they also don't want to hold women accountable. They want to pander to women. They don't want to admit that female predators exist. And they don't want to admit that female rapists exist. And they um, don't want to hold women accountable in the criminal justice system in general, right? They want it. There are calls for abolishing women's prisons. I mean, can you imagine if people would say abolish male prisons, people would probably demonstrate against that. They would be enraged and outraged about that. And yeah, I mean, people are uh, going insane over Roe v. Wade um, being overturned, right? They they go on the street and march for that, right? They, or they, they go out there and get all crazy for the feminist Iran protests. But they don't give a shit that in every country, in every country or almost every country, it is legal that baby boys get mutilated. Nobody gives a shit about that. And you want to tell me people care about the core values of the man's rights movement and they just misunderstand and they're just ignorant. No, they, they actively hate men and boys. They see us as peasants and as slaves and they want to keep us as peasants and slaves. This is how our society runs. This is how our society operates. Right? This is what we have to come to terms with, actually. We can all be fake optimistic and all of that. And I do think there are some people out there who start to wake up and more and more care about men's issues. Right? I don't want to be all doom and gloom, like I said before. I think slowly but surely there will be some people who um, get behind um, the men's rights movement but we don't have to exaggerate that because we have to be realistic right and we have to actually um, reject feminism 100% and not be like oh there are some who are good and some who are bad I used to believe that nonsense when I was starting with men's rights but now, after a year, I was like, no, fuck feminism. It's that simple. We're simply a movement, an ideology that wants to address issues that affect men and boys. Now, if I were to do a full video on the men's rights movement, it would be a three hour video. This is just kind of a quick introduction into what the men's rights movement is and what the men's rights movement means to me. So thank you very much. My name is Blue Orange 22 and have a nice day. Yeah, this was an atrocious video, of course. Um, and again, you don't speak for the whole men's rights movement, Blue Orange. I'm sorry, you just dropped the ball again. And let me show you something, right? Because there are some people out there coping and say, oh, feminists are just stupid and they misunderstand and they are basically misinformed or blah 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 all this crap right let me show you this really interesting study here where it basically was uh, found that women who identify relatively strong with feminists but less strongly with women um, persist in a math task and show increased willingness to sacrifice men in a moral choice to them a task now, what this tells you is, first, feminists are willing to sacrifice men, or more willing to sacrifice men, actually. So the whole bullshit that they also stand for men's issues is complete nonsense. Their motivations are very clear, actually. But what this also shows is 
they persist in a math task, which shows you that they're actually quite intelligent. So they're not doing this out of stupidity or because they don't know better or some excuse, some lame ass excuse like that, but actually they do it with malice and forethought and they know what they're doing. They're a hate movement and they are fascists. It's that simple. And when you look at their history, it, I mean, seriously, look into the feminist history and not just the recent history, but actually the early feminists, and you see what their true roots are, right? I, again, I have covered this on my channel multiple times, and I also covered uh, on my channel why misogyny doesn't exist, or at least there's no evidence that it exists, and there is actually evidence that the opposite is true, that human beings are very fond of women, have a pro-female bias and have an anti-male bias. And there are dozens of experimental studies showing this. So I don't want to hear this nonsense that, of course, misogyny exists, blah, 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 that nonsense. Just because you want to show some uh, bullshit optics, uh, that does not mean we have to lie and be uh, buying in, into the feminist uh, frame of reference. We don't have to actually do that. We, ha we can call out the bullshit directly. So yeah, this is really another one um, about Blue Orange. He's just uh, someone I have to respond to on a regular basis, as it seems. Because again, he sets himself up as some kind of leader or someone who uh, who speaks for the whole of the men's rights movement when that is not the case. I, I'm sorry. You know, you, your ideas are not bringing the men's rights movement forward because you want to uh, have compromise with the feminists who you self-admitted even in this video are determined to destroy us. So there's no middle ground here. It's that simple. So yeah, peace out.